Now we, not, we need to reach out. How many are happy this evening? Hallelujah. Amen. Tonight, I want to invite my friend, our brother in Christ. God has called him to serve in nations. And already he has begun his, his task in him. Now I want to invite him. He is our brother in Christ. A called one and a servant of God. From Uganda. Uganda. He's a friend of mine. Not just in online in, in, in YouTube and the FB, but is my really friend. He, he to clap to Jesus. As I usher in the man of God. The servant of God from Uganda. May God bless you. As you minister on this altar. God bless you. So Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Pastor. Aaron Kea. Aaron Kea. I love you. I hate you. Uh, the first time I met you, we fell in love, and I thank God for that. I think I have to ask the church to get seated. Thank you for serving Jesus. Thank you for using all your energy. We were cool here. But we are sweating, which is great in the house of the Lord. I thank everybody who has sacrificed their time to be here. To miss your sleep. To be here and worship Jesus. Jesus loves you. And he loves what you're doing. Many people are in bed. I thank all the members of this church. And I want to thank Pastor again. And for following me and my brother Morris. So to begin with, I think I have a deeper connection with Kenya. I don't know why I love Kenya but I see God has a deep connection for me in Kenya and I'm thankful for that opportunity today I'm Mwonge Augustine from Jinja, Uganda I was born in a small village in Namibia and my mom left my father when I was around the age of three or four and then we came to my aunt's place in Namaingo I used to leave that side and I learned some Lusamia and then I went back to Ginger after my mom having some issues with my father. And when I went back to Ginger, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And as I was growing up, I went through some struggles with my mom. But after God putting me to some level in life, I took things for granted in my life. I never cared about Jesus Christ. After being born again, I just went and did my own stuff. Like many of the believers in the world. 
like many of the youths today in the world tomorrow i'm going to be speaking to the youths of this church because god is calling the youths and we want to lead the youths in the right way so when i lived in the world and things did not go so well i came back to jesus I was already born again. Like if you're born again and you never do what Jesus wants you to do. It looks like you're not born again. So the moment you understand that I'm not doing right. And you come back to Jesus. And you give him your whole life. So and make him the center of your life. He's going to do things in your life. I'll speak about some of the things he's done for me to, uh, uh, on Sunday. Because God is giving me an opportunity to share on Sunday. But I know my brothers have been seeing a great work God has been doing in my life. So I encourage to all of you to be available on Sunday. So you don't miss out that testimony that I'm going to share on Sunday. So when I finish to study to go to school, God called me to be a counselor. I encourage his people. I counsel his people. That's a responsibility God has put on me. And as we all know, God is the greatest counselor of all counselors. All counseling begins from God. You all remember when he told Joshua in 1 9. That be strong and courageous. Sometimes in life people are going to go through difficult times. But a counselor will tell them be strong and courageous. And the counselor will help them to know that if you face some obstacles it means something you're doing is right don't stop, keep pushing forward so that's a little introduction about me today I've come to share a word with you I, I've been in the church for some time. I came back to Jesus in 2017. And this that I'm going to talk to you has been happening to me in tw from 2017. So my topic, my theme today, what God is going to speak to everyone who has sacrificed their lives God is wanting to speak to you to know your worth to know your power everybody who has a book where to write that's the topic I want to speak about but let's pray first God we thank you for this day we thank you for everybody in this community and we thank you for everybody in this church I thank you for Pastor Aaron and his family and I thank you God for his willingness to share the word of God and we thank you God for providing to this big church that we are building in this place 
And I thank you for connecting all of us to be here. God, I'm, as I'm going to speak your word to these people, I just pray for your spirit to come and lead me. We pray all that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I uh, praise God for this day. We are going to go and acquire a number of scriptures. Like we said, knowing your worth. Or knowing your power. A lot of believers. Many people in the church. When they go through difficult times. They fail to remember the power they have in them. In a lot of time, the devil uses that to make them losers, to make them weak. They forget the word of God. They forget whoever they confessed. And their lives end up in misery. I don't give my to dig each other. They keep coming to church. And then other people who don't come to church, they are in a better situation than you. It's because you don't understand the power you have. As we come to church, like our sister was singing great in the house of the Lord. We understand that. As she's singing, we are all in our spirits, we are clinging to that. But when we leave this place, it all goes away. The devil washes all of that out of our mind. Now, God is reminding every believer here today that he's given you the power whether you're a child whether you're a teacher whether you're a farmer everyone whatever you are doing the day you confess Jesus Christ you have become a holy one you are from the priesthood family so what is going to help you every believer here is to understand is to understand that you are from a holy family and every day you are moving your lives whether you are going in the market if you meditate on the word of God and you know I am a holy one I am a strong one in Jesus then when the devil tries to blame blindfold you, I you will use the scriptures, the word of God that you hid in your heart. So where do we get this confidence? I want us to read in Luke 10, 19. It says, listen, listen, I have given you Asemi. I have given you authority Asemi teko. so that you can walk on snakes and scorpions Kodokela. and overcome all the powers of the enemy and nothing will hurt you God is saying he's given you the power he's given you the power to control the poverty you're going through he's given you the power he's given you the power to step on the sickness around your home he's given you the power to step on every trouble disturbing your family but what do you have to do? 
Mm. Is to read this word and understand it. And claim this word. Because you are from a priesthood family. God has given you the power to pray for the sick. He's given you the power to command money to come to your house. Everyone has that power. Because God has given it to you. It's not only the pastor who God has given that power. You are a believer, you can pray for the sick. Because God has given you that power. But the devil tries to lie to you, to your mind. And you lose your faith. I did go through trouble. The devil plants some seed in our life. We know the devil is the cause of all confusions in our mind. In my church where I come from, we have some old ladies in the church. They are meeting, praying for other people. And God is using them to work righteously in other people's lives. But where does it begin? It begins with you understanding. You know about spiritual things. Something about God. It's all about faith. And it's all about believing. And you remember uh, Abraham. Why he became a father of all descendants. He just believing in God. You know he's above everything. And as you're praying for somebody, have faith in your heart that God is gonna do it. As you have no money in your house, you have no wound on a skuma weekend. But you pray to Pray with faith, God is going to give it to you. Because He never fails in His faithful Look at this scripture up here. Cast your burdens on the Lord. And he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. It's just, like, it's just like when you're from some kingdom. We are princes. All of us, we are princes. Jesus Christ can never let us to be moved. Because that's a promise. He promised those who are saved. In 1 Peter 2 9, but you are the chosen race. The king is priests. The holy nation, God's own people, chosen to proclaim the wonderful acts of God. Are we not the ones? Yes. Are we not the ones who go on street every day and tell the non-believers God what God is doing? Yes. And you think God is going to let us suffer when you are doing his work? The reason why God has brought me to Kenya today is to share with you what is put on my heart. And a lot of believers in the world today, even in Uganda where I live, they lack understanding the power they have in Jesus Christ. I did not know about that power when I went in the world and focused on my own stuff. We are a chosen generation. God loved all of us. That's why he brought us in his house. 
Many people, they still come to church and they have one foot this way and another foot this way. They are testing God. So they end up not being anywhere. They are on the side of the devil and then also they come to church. So what happens God is not going to do you something good because he wants those who are faithful who are following him and if you go to the devil devil will also not give you anything you know what the devil will tell you he will and you end up making a loss everywhere. Praise God, church. Amen. The knowledge of understanding God begins from you spending time in God's word. Why God made me this way from 2017 I put everything down and then I focused on Jesus I said Jesus no matter what I'm going to follow you even when I have nothing to eat I'm going to follow you I've made some tough decisions lately in life and then God promised me this is what I'm going to do for you but after doing that decision I did not see God doing that thing he promised and what happens to a lot of believers are they going to turn back for forgetting that God God is under control. Even though he promised he will give it to you tomorrow and he doesn't bring it tomorrow you don't have to quit you have to continue trusting in God maybe he knows tomorrow when he gives it to you he's going to cause some chaos in your life because God wants the best for you he's chosen you for a purpose he's seeing you move in the communities around here and you're doing a great work. You're telling so many people about Jesus. And then all of them are abusing you. They are saying you, you have run mad. And God is seeing those of you who are not stopping. God is seeing you. God is going to encourage you. Who encourages you? It's God himself. Because he has a reason why he's supporting you to go through that. Last week I made a video. I was encouraging people. I was speaking to someone who is going through a difficult time. There are very many people who are poor, but they are not going through a difficult time. Did you ever realize that? Yes. Someone doesn't have what to eat, is not anywhere, but they are not going through a difficult time. Everything is okay with them. And now my encouragement to the people was, like I told you, God called me to be a counselor. My encouragement was if you are going through a difficult time, 
Just know you are special. Yeah. There is a reason why God is taking you through that. There are people who cannot go through that. So God wants to use you as an example. You go through that and overcome. Be at some level. And give testimony to other people. Even the weak who would not have faith to go through that. They would get a chance to go through it and say, Oh brother so and so went through that. So as you're going through difficult times all of us here which they are going to come in life pastor knows about the difficult times he's going through Many people in life they go through difficult times. But what is going to help you stand is knowing your power, your worth. Knowing that you are chosen family. No matter what happens to you, there will some rescue mission, rescue team coming. That's what you have to remember. That has to keep pumping you to move forward. Even when fire comes, you have hope for some rescue mission coming. So you should keep pressing and moving forward. And also know that Jesus Christ is with me. I'm stepping in him, his feet. He's guiding my feet. Whenever I go, he's guiding me. And he wants to use my story. If you remember that in your mind, in your heart. The reason why Jesus saved us is to use you and save other people. It's not just about coming to church. On Sunday, I'll speak about something. I'll speak something to all of us, every generation. God, God is giving each one of us responsibility. And he wants us to do it. So, like we said, we say God has given you the power. Use that power to command every situation in your life. Use that power to command peace in your marriage. Mondo Use that power God has given you. To command your children to understand God. Use that power God has given you. To command wisdom in your family, in your children. That is what you have to do. Don't let people who have stuff. Don't let people who have things, tangible stuff, make you forget about your worth in Jesus Christ. Your worth in Jesus Christ is not about tangible stuff. I don't know if you understand tangible stuff. Things like many cars, many clothes, uh, looking good, having many kids, having so many things. Your worth in Jesus is not seen. It cannot be seen by people. You might be there. They see you, you're very skinny, not like me. 
You look like you have no energy. Inde no kadi miyonge giteko. You just have one gomez or one tete. Inuna kodi la wa chiel kende. That's it. That's not how our worth in Jesus is counted. Mano okieka kan nengo akumi Yesu ikwan. They might see you like that. Ginyalo ne nika kamano. But when Jesus sees you as the richest in the whole community. To Yesu neki kaka yalo maja moko e oganda note. Because he does not look at those things. Nike okone mwandu muluri go. Jesus Christ looks at your heart. Yesu Kristo neno mane chuni. And all of you to ute. Jesus Christ is calling you to love him from your heart. Yesu Kristo luongo mondo uhere kwa mkyei chunyu. Everything you do Gimora mora mitimo. Oh Jesus, don't look at people. Nikiti Yesu, kikirangu gano. Don't do it because someone has so and so is seeing me. Kikitim nikiti ngane ngane nena. If you are coming to clean the church, don't do it because someone is looking at you. Kibiro katama na luoko kanesa, kikitim ngane nena. Just do it because Jesus is looking at you. Nikitim nikiti Yesu neni. I was in a church in Jinja. Nena ni kanisa Jinja. I was doing so many things. Nena kimo But my focus was on Jesus. So I said Jesus, I want you to give me something. I come to church, I I play the keyboard. I sing, I do so many things. But I need something Jesus. So Adwaro Kimoro yes and he gave it to me to nenomia and he's ready to give to every one of you so say kere mali ndio ngatakata kuomuka at any age you are at ei higini mora mora ni se chopi so don't let people despise you koro kikiwe dio chai tell them you have a mighty jesus ni chigini mkoni yesu mwenye is about the people who have degree and you have no degree and ei we jogo man ko de degree tu ni ongego And Jesus knows that you're sparing your riches in heaven. I love sparing my riches in heaven. Yes. Pastor Aaron loves to spend uh, spare so much riches in heaven. I had a chance to move with him all day. I'm, I'm still thankful Pastor Aaron. I think he's an amazing guy. You guys are blessed to have him as your pastor. Yeah, at least I spent with him over five hours today. And it was enough to show what kind of pastor you guys have. And he's a great example. All of us can follow him. You saw what Jesus did. He washed the disciples' feet. That is the level he wants to put all of you here who have come to church today. You sacrifice your sleep. I know you feel like you want to sleep. But at least take that with you. To mm. Humble yourself to the level of Jesus. I challenge my people in Jinja sometimes. Amiga se chimoko chwa kujo kumi jogo mani Jinja kinde moko. And I have seen it happen. To asene no kati more. Ah, Jesus said, I'm not very certain of the verse. Yes, you know what? You can you see kama andikene ntie. He said you will do much more than this. Oh, yes, what you know the team more more loyal magi because he was living. Niket and no say who go be. He had a small time to live. Nen ko di kinde machuko kuma da ke pe. And he is given us the authority to do everything we want. According to God's will. We've seen some people God has used to build uh, churches that have maybe 40,000 people. Did Jesus do that? 
in his time I don't think he did that but he said as he was going that if you believe in me if you are faithful in me you will do much more than this you see this church God is building behind here that's a mega church God is doing in this place but he said you will do much more than I've done not on your own even though you're building a, a church that hosts 40,000 people it's still Jesus existing doing that work yeah. never at one time lift yourself and say it's your effort like I praise him every day you get to hear about more about my testimony I'm a chapati man on the street that's where I'm supposed to be but because of his grace if, uh, a month ago and a half two months ago I flew to Dar es Salaam and Zanzibar chapati man going through that chapat mm. And I went to Nairobi. I flew again to Nairobi. Two months ago. And I spoke to some young people. And a week ago in Uganda. God took me to Western Uganda. To speak to over 250 youths and look God is bringing me back here again and that's what he's wanting to speak to you as well God wants to do the same to everyone here but he wants us to know our words to know the power we have we are priests and princesses because we are from a holy family we should not worry just cast your burdens on the Lord Jesus Christ that's all he wants when I was a young man I wanted to fulfill my youthly desires but I forgot that Jesus wanted me to focus to cast the burdens on him and when I trusted my mind and I fell down to zero nowhere to be seen and I looked up to him he's always welcoming everybody praise God even many of us who have not been uh, acknowledging him if you decide today and you start to acknowledge him and you start to claim that power you, you had but you had no idea Jesus is ready to take you from that step onward He's ready to change your life in that business you're doing in that marriage that suffering whether you have been having some troubles in your relationship maybe it's been because you forgot that you have the power you forgot to use that power to calm the chaos in your relationship 
ikue apakamani kenyimani no maybe you've been performing poorly in class seche moke sebe doka grade mari racha in school and you just forgot the power you have in jesus christ do you see we look at the tech come in kono kum yes i hope all of us will come to understand that and give Jesus his place i to me yesu kare that's the message the lord wanted to speak today mane toru at ma yesu nende do at miwa kawuno to all of us here today como aduto kawuno ka and god is looking forward to change some people from this congregation tenya sen kodi geno mar loko ji e chokru Oh, that you are one.